Welcome, welcome back to Bleeding Blue, a show about the history of the New York football giants. Mm. My name is Justin Pennick, alongside one of my best friends in the entire world. Big world. Big world. Small world. Small world, after all. My wee friend, Nikki Snacks. <sighs> Feel good? No? Yeah. You do? Feel great. You don't have any Pinot today. Nope. Not drinking. First Sunday in, I don't know, since Vietnam. I'm probably. I'm proud. I, of, I'm kind of proud of you. Didn't drink all weekend. But I also feel uncomfortable. Yeah, it's weird. If right? we're not if we're not talking and we're not filming something with with the Pinot in the hands. I know, I know. But good for you. Yeah, you know, it's uh, yeah. I, t- I took this weekend off. I felt I deserved it. So what we're doing today? Actually, I didn't deserve shit. I felt I needed it. What we're doing today is snacks pantry, but a little bit of a twist. Twist because. I'm forcing you to break a rule. What rule am I forcing you to break? More than five. It's more than five. We're doing more ten. Than five. We're doing ten today. Ten. You know who wore number ten? Brad Van Pelt. Yep. So ten. <laughs> you thought I was going to say you like players. Me. Top ten players that snacks. Me. What's the, what's the, I I that, that I I, 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 I wish I could have seen. Yes. So like I wasn't alive when they were playing. Like Lawrence Saylor, we were not alive when Lawrence Saylor was playing. Right, just, just I mean, he will most likely be on your list. Might as well of get that one out of the way. Giants that, correct, yes. correct. Um, say a uh, uh, Mel Hine, like somebody like that that we wish we could have seen. There you go. So that is going to be the list that I the- wanted to see. So he's got to get in my yes. head. He knows what kind of football I like. So I'm assuming this should be pretty easy. Well, maybe not. Ah. Eh, eh. I just forgot when I left off. Motherfucker. I'll get to him. It's okay. He's going to be an honorable mention. One. One. What? Oh, One. fuck. Yeah. Two. Yep. There we go. There we go. Two. Let's start it right. Okay. All right. First player. Yep. Y.A. Tittle. Wow. Right off the rip. Number six, Y.A. Tittle. Uh, so, Y.A. Tittle was uh, the sixth pick in the first round. Um, funny. People don't realize... He only played for the Giants for four seasons. And it was his last four seasons. And it was his last four seasons, but he's remembered as a Giant. Yes. Uh, he was the MVP in 1963, and it's pretty funny to me. So he had a 55.5 uh, career completion percentage. What was it with the Giants? It was... Fuck, it was remember. more. Yeah, it was... What was it? Shit. He was a... F- <laughs> it was like Shit, scary. I, 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 damn it. You look at one of his years... I broke it down on Pro Football Focus with just the... Pro Football Reference. Uh, pro Football Reference. With just the the four years, and it was I think it was sixty, I want to say sixty one. Yeah, off the top of my head. It was yeah, like it, it was it was something like that. Where you look at his some of his years with the Giants, there were two years in particular where you look at the basic stat line, and it's like this is a a decent line for like a quarterback today, right. including the completion rate, which I always talk. You know, we talked about with like Aaron Thomas in the trailer. Yes. that Aaron Thomas, you know, all these guys had like low catch rates, but their yards per reception was insanely high, yep. and that's just how the kind of the game went. But why Tittle um, doesn't get an? And I get it. Played in the sixties before the you know pre Super Bowl era, yeah. but doesn't get enough respect when we talk about like the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Everybody likes to talk about Sims and Eli. Why Tittle, I don't think, doesn't get enough respect for the type of quarterback that he was for the Giants, short amount of time, um, during the years that he was here. He also made championship games, never won a championship. No, I don't he, think he did. He, he did not. I don't think he did. He did not. And uh, it's funny, because you look, go to, if you go to his pro football reference page, and you look at his touchdown numbers, you go down, it's like 12, 13, 12, 10, and then with the Giants, 19, boom. it's like 36, then you yeah. go to the Giants, it's like 36, 35, 32. So he and they really, were clowned on. They traded for him. Yes. They were clowned on for the Giants were for trading for him. And they showed everyone else. Yeah. Pretty uh pretty wild. So Y.E. Tittle is number six. I'm gonna get another old E out of the way. Okay. Emily Tanel. Wow. I told you there was two oldies on this list, and you got both of them. Oh, you're you're gonna miss an oldie. Uh-huh. And People are going to no, get... No, wait a I'm minute. No, no, no. So. I lied. I lied. There is another one. Okay. There is another right. one. Emlyn Tunnell. Emlyn Tunnell. Correct. Uh, he was undrafted, as we all know, because he was the first black player in New York Giants history. Yeah. First African Also African-American. served in the military. Yes. Yes. So, uh, what I found interesting about him, and he played with the Giants from 1948 to 1958, uh, why he was so interesting to me, other than having 80 career interceptions, which is a great number for a 10-year career, um... 
he had 2,209 punt, re- punt return yards. Yeah. He was a great punt returner. Have we ever seen a good punt returner on the Giants? Like, Ron Dixon was an electric kick returner. Um, you know, Hickson had his moments in, uh, in the kick returning prowess. But punt returner, off the top of my head that I've seen in my lifetime, no. I mean, maybe Seahorn, but that's what ruined Seahorn's career. And Emlyn Tennell was a master of his craft in the in the punt return game. So I thought that was very, very interesting. I think just the aura and the history of Emlyn Tennell in in all totality is something that I would have loved to see in back in the 40s and 50s. So Emlyn Tennell, number 10. He is second most all-time in interceptions. Wow. Yeah, I was going to say 80 in 10 years, 79 in 10 years. And is it a sucks lot. because number one is has 81. Oh, Emlyn, you couldn't play one more year. How many touchdowns does he have? Ten touchdowns in his Giants career and his NFL career. There is a player on this list that their touchdowns really stuck out to me. But go really, ahead. yes, I love that. This, it, 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 no, it just just go ahead. Keep guessing. I kind of want to do one day. Maybe we can even if, if the more that we do this, let's do a biography on Emlyn Tunnell. A biography, a whole biography. I like we'll, that. I think he deserves it. We'll talk with people. He's the he's the player that fascinates me the most in Giants history. Yeah. Yeah, he's a very fascinating figure. And we spent a little time talking about him last offseason. Yeah. But maybe more in depth, we should do I it. wanna I wanna make like a 30, 40 minute biography. Yeah, that's that, very that's very cool. Emlyn to, Tennell. There has it. to be like NFL historians that would love to do that. Oh, I'm sure. Emlyn Tennell, he's are you kidding me? The the first I mean, just being it's like Jackie Robinson. Yeah. I, I, you know, in, in a sense, yeah. in a sense that he was in all of ML, MLB. I get that. But Jackie Robinson, the Brooklyn Dodgers and, you know, the New York area, the New York Giants, New Jersey yeah. Giants, first African-American to play for them. The history was, writes itself. And he was itself. damn good. And and he, he was, was, yeah, damn he was good. phenomenal. Yes, yeah. phenomenal. So history writes itself. I think that's a great idea. Emlyn Tunnell, number 10. Speaking of special teams, uh, Sean Landetta. Wow. No. No. He let me wear. I just wanted to bring it that he let me wear his Super Bowl rings. Yes, and Sean Landetta. Yes, uh, I, I didn't. I don't have any other special teamers on here. I don't really care. Yeah, I don't care uh, about it about punting. So. I just wanted to mention that he let me wear his Super. Bowl. No, it's, it's a good little tidbit. Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker. Wow, you did get it. Mm-hmm. Fuck. There's a there's a personal story that I have with Stephen Baker. He, first of all, awesome nickname. That's amazing. Nickname. Made a video on him. During COVID, yes, like I as like that. Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker, and like a, a just a, a video about his career, he all, he has an interesting backstory as well. Um, he's very interactive with the fans on Facebook, which is cool. You can just like email him and Facebook message him to like answer. Yeah, he yeah. signed my father has like a, remember the Giants jacket you were wearing the first episode last year? Yes, my father's a very similar kind of jacket, and Stephen Baker signed the back of that jacket. Does it have touchdown maker? On I. It? I bet you it does. My father lo- also loves that. That's name. awesome. So I, I, I'm really stunned you got this one. Uh, it was between him or McConkey. I want to, I want to throw that out there. But Stephen Baker drafted uh, round three, pick eighty three. He only had a five year career from eighty seven to ninety two. Really? Yes. That really stunned me. He had twenty five hundred eighty seven yards receiving. He had one hundred forty one receiving yards, twenty one touchdowns. I don't know where he gets the touchdown maker from because 21 in five years doesn't really seem like a whole lot. But anyway. I've, I noticed <laughs> that too looking at his pro football. <laughs> anyway. Thing. He did have a touchdown in a Super Bowl. Yes, he did. And uh, a very legendary one. Yeah. And that was, so he is a Super Bowl champion. And I just, he t- the other thing about him, I hope I hope this is right because if not, it takes away a lot of the luster of why I wanted to watch him. Mm-hmm. He's 5'8". I think that is true. I remember meeting him, and he was a small man. He's the size of me. Yeah. I'm 5'8". Yeah. That's like watching me going out on the NFL field, catching touchdowns. Giants had some small receivers. It's, McConkey was McConkey not McConkey was 5'10". Yeah. McConkey was a small dude, and that's why it was a toss-up. But Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker, his nickname. Awesome. Awesome. And then being that much of a midget at the NFL wide receiver position is pretty awesome and being effective at it. Uh, so his numbers weren't outstanding, but he was a key part of a giant Super Bowl win. So, Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker, number eight. All right, we have three guys so far. Give me the guys in the rankings that we have so far, that I have so far. Yes, so you have Wyatt Tittle at six. Mm-hmm. Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker, at eight. And Emlyn Tennell at ten. All right, so I, I, got, I got some of the back half guys. Yeah, yeah. Let me get rid of Stephen Baker. I hope I didn't just get rid of somebody that um is important on my list. Gary Reasons. That's not a bad guess. 
Uh, thought about Gary Reasons, but ultimately decided not to put him on the list. And you may argue with me when you hear the other ones, but it's my fucking list. So. But it's not wrong. No, it's not. Gary Reasons, the hit against Denver. Mm-hmm. I think they actually played Denver during the regular season of the 86 season. And I think it was that game, and it was snowing. Yes. Goal line, and I mean, if you want to talk about quintessential, like, oh, shit, that doesn't look good, CTE football, but classic football. Classic football. Like that Gary Reasons just jumping up while the running back is jumping up it at was the goal line. Just awesome. Just boom. I mean, just a brick wall. It was, it's just snap. such a phenomenal highlighted play that you probably just saw. And um, John Madden goes bananas over it too yeah. and that's what really tops it is yeah. this is football that's football yeah. he drops a and, line and like another that. another it's a great name gary reasons yes yeah. football name a lot of reasons why you should like gary brad van pelt brad van pelt it's a good one but he ultimately did not make the no list. I way know, i know i know no way i know i know there is I think looking at it here... Disagree. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> there is one guy on this list that I probably should switch out for Van Pelt and a couple others, but I'm not going to just for personal reasons. It's a good guess. It's a good guess. All right, let's go back to oldies. Okay. You got one more oldie, oldie. I got two on my list. You got two on your list, and there is two that... Could easily be put on here. It's just which one do you pick? Or you better have Sam Huff on the list. See, I don't. I got the other one that you're thinking of. So Frank, say Frank Gifford. Frank Gifford. And I did Frank Gifford because offensively, like, how do you not, between the rushing ability and the receiving ability, come on. How could you not have Frank Gifford on that list? He's Giants royalty. Royalty. Round one, pick 11. He's with the Giants from uh, 52 to 60. And then he, I believe, did he have a military stint? I believe he also did as well. He did. He did because then he came back to the Giants in 62 and played for another three years. Uh, he had 3,600 uh, 3, yards rushing, 34 TDs rushing. And then he had 360 receptions. He had 5,400 receiving yards, and he had 43 touchdowns. Like Frank Gifford did it all. Sam Huff, I know, I know, I know. Some people also say that he changed the game. Too. I know, you know how they say, I OT know. changed game. Sam Huff also changed the game the way that he played linebacker. I couldn't agree more, but I went offense. I went offense because I have a lot of defense on this list. All right, you know what? That's fair. Thank you. That also lets you know where the Giants are at offensively in yeah, their franchise. Yeah, that's, that's true. Are they a good offense franchise? Yep. So Frank Gifford is number three, and he most recently passed away, and I felt bad, so I had yes. to put him on the list. Kathy Lee also, I think she's a good-looking woman. Yeah. Still to this day. To this day. Sorry, Frank. Talk yeah. about your wife that way. <laughs> Phil Sims. <laughs> nope. I'm kind of glad. I'm, like, I'm kind of glad. Yeah, he's like, he, he, come on. He's just, I feel like Phil Sims. I saw it with Eli in, in a way. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I, I just, I, I wasn't propelled enough to put Sims on the list. I could do without it. Honestly, I would have, for, for one seat or for five games, I would have rather seen what Hosteller did. <laughs> you know, it's it, in, in a weird way. I just, I don't know. Phil Sims is just a little too vanilla for me. All right. I have five guys left on my list. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six guys remaining. I, that's not good. No, it's not. That's not good. Why don't you get why don't you get out of the way, number one? Lawrence Taylor. Thank you. How fucking hard was that? Well, I, I'm trying to play the I understand, the game I understand, here. but I didn't want you to pause and I didn't want you to get you know, I didn't want to get you getting emotional because you get emotional and if I you're do. not getting things right away. So you might as well just get one out of the way so you could regroup, think, let me talk about Lawrence Taylor for a second, try and think of some other names. Um Lawrence Taylor, as we know, was the second overall pick. Uh, in 1981, he played with the Giants from 81 to 93, snorted a lot of cocaine. Um, oh, sorry, did I write that? Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, he had 1,089 tackles. He had 142 sacks, which would have had more. There's nine and a half his rookie year, I believe. Yep, because they didn't count him in his rookie year in 1981. That didn't make a stat until 82, which we have probably said on the show a million fucking times. Shit, this episode, I am using that F word a lot. Anyway, remarkable 54 forced fumbles. I mean, every time he hit a quarterback... It's impossible that they didn't fumble the ball to begin with. 54 forced fumbles to me in 12 years seems like an astronomical amount. Um, maybe I'm off and don't have other numbers in front of me, but just watch. The guy's a freak of nature. He's it, it, the best football player ever, arguably. Yeah. Overall player, yes. I mean, Tom Brady, whatever. Jerry Rice, whatever. I get it. He changed the game of football to what it is still played like today. Yep. 
where they emphasize the left tackle and it's arguably the second most position in professional sports. Well, at least in football. Yeah. Because of him and the way he ran off the edge. Speed at the linebacker position. Speed rushing the passer from the linebacker position. I'm not... You know I'm not comparing Mika Parsons to Lawrence Taylor, but that type of player yeah. is what LT was. And we saw what Mika Parsons did in just his first year in the NFL. Yeah. And you're seeing how Mike, Micah Parsons... Micah Mika, Parsons, Mika whatever Parsons. fucks Cowboys. What the hell scum. is that? And you're, you're seeing how Micah Parsons is kind of changing the way that maybe teams are evaluating their inside linebackers too now. Yeah. Where, you know, Micah is a guy that can kind of come off the edge and he can be a guy that can be in the middle and, 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 and cover guys. So you're seeing the way that he's kind of changing, changing things, but that's not even in... Like, his the way that maybe he's changed the way that people are evaluating the game right. doesn't even come close to how Lawrence Taylor did change the way that the game was played. Correct. And we'll see how he Well, yeah, we'll, career, we'll see so. how he does. And, and listen, anytime you could dominate the game of football for 12 years, high on cocaine. It, well, also, he's not the same player without cocaine. Without let's be let's Let's be real. No. I don't he's understand not. why these players don't do it more often. I, I agree. Take the suspension, but, you know, g- g- take the four-game suspension, but have great numbers and get a big contract. Fuck it. Whatever. Lawrence Taylor, clear cut number one. I initially didn't write this guy down. That means he's probably on the list. Mark Bavaro. Dude, how would you not write that? I really, really big idiot moment. Come on. You know how much I love Mark Bavaro. Yes. Arguably the toughest New York Giant to ever put on a Giants helmet. Yes. Mark Bavaro, number two. Wow. Love it. Uh-huh. Love it. Number two, Mark Bavaro was a fourth round pick. He was actually pick a hundred. Uh he, you know, I'm Obviously not the greatest offensive numbers in the world. 351 receptions, 39 touchdowns, 4,700 yards receiving. Uh, he played with the Giants from 85 to 90. So he, listen, two-time Super Bowl champ. Yes. Mark Bavaro, the legendary when he had, um, how many players did he have on his back against? Uh, I'd say about six, seven, eight, nine. God, why, what team? Why am I forgetting? 49ers. 49ers. Uh, duh. Blanked out on that one. He had like six, seven guys just dragging him through the mud, and he was still motoring. That guy is one tough son of a bitch. And also, on a personal level, I've met Mark Bavaro, and he's a dumb son of a bitch, too. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> what? Oh, okay. Boring as the day is long. If he reached out to Bleeding Blue and said, I'd love for you guys to interview us, I'd say no. That's how boring the interview would be. But he was a phenomenal player that I wish I saw. Um... The Giants currently have nobody that is tough on their team. Literally nobody. They have tougher fans in the stands than they do players on the football field. Are you field. talking about yourself? Absolutely. There you go. How'd you know? But Mark Bavaro was one tough son of a bitch, and I would have loved to see him play number two on my list. My favorite Mark Bavaro story is when he broke his jaw against the Saints. I think it was eight, I think it was eighty five. I think eighty five was one of his was one of his best seasons. Um it was a year before they won a Super Bowl. So they play the Saints and same game that he breaks his jaw, comes back, catches one or two touchdown passes, has one of the best games of his career. And that's also the same game where LT makes the famous gif of him oh, shooting yeah. the, yep. the, fing- the finger yep. guns of dragging, running across the line of scrimmage, dragging a guy down, gets up, all in one motion. It's like two of the most iconic motions in sports. Let's put three, because I know you're a Tiger guy. Yes. Tiger's like the fist, fist pump. pump. Yep. Ali's. Like also fit like fist pump at the boxing glove okay, when, he, yep, when he knocks pitcher, down yeah, Sonny Liston. Yep. And then I think LT doing yeah. just just that. I think three of the most iconic kind of like movements, yeah. gifts, moments. I I, I would have I would have to say so. Yep. There you go. I can't I can't really think of No, that's that's a that's a Yeah. That was a good call. That was Bavaro, good call. but Bavaro broke his jaw in that same game. What a game that was, huh? That was, that was, that was, a lot, that was a lot came a out of, a lot came out of that game. Yeah. So Mark Bavaro, number two. All right, now give me a recap on the list. What got we, it. What have we got so far? We got one, Lawrence Taylor. Number two, Mark Bavaro. Number three, Frank Gifford. So you got the first three, and then you got middle of the pack at number six, Y.A. Tittle. Then you got number eight, Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker, and you got number 10, Emlyn Tunnell. So I need four, five, and seven. Correct. And if you want a hint? I don't want a hint. Okay. Sure. No hints. You let me know when you get a hint. Joe Morris. Joe Morris. I wanted to put Joe Morris on here, but I wound up not doing it. Um, to be honest, kind of biased. Joe Morris, if we didn't have dinner with him, I may have put him on the list. But I learned so much more about yeah. him and the way he played that I was like, all right, I got A little it. bit more of a nerd than we thought. He's a, he's a he big time a nerd. nerd. He's a nerd. And like, he's so short. <laughs> he's so short. Like, you, you, think, you think that 
you know, all the, all these football heroes that you have of, you know, I don't care. I don't care who, I don't care if you're the water boy or if you were, you know, LT on these Super Bowl teams. I mean, you're like football heroes to us, right? So you think that these guys are just brute and they're tough. They play in the eighties. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. He was, he's a nerd. He's, he's like nerd. very, very smart about the game of football. Yep. Um, he's a fo- football aficionado and you will yes. learn more about that. Very soon. You have this. You oh, have actually, this. You, uh, wrote, you already learned about that. I, think. I don't. I don't know when this episode's coming out. Yeah. You have this aff- aff- affliction. Is that the right word? You have this love for OJ Anderson. I do have the love for OJ Anderson. Is he on this? I he's feel not. like he's like number. Oh man, he's I, not on. I would have picked like number seven. I. I you all. Know, you know what? It's funny because number seven. Uh, this is where OJ was gonna go, but I swapped it. I actually will show you okay. my I show you I'll show you my phone notes that I did the list last night. I will show you that OJ originally wasn't here because I love OJ Anderson. Um, you know, just what a great trade. Excuse me, great trade the Giants made with the Arizona Cardinals to bring in OJ, and I, he helped win a Super Bowl like very much so. And uh, he's a great guy. I've seen him. He's a local guy. I see him at the restaurant that we yep. go to for dinner um, numerous times. He's very nice, very personable, um, good dude all around. So OJ's not on the list, but he is an absolute honorable mention. Leonard Marshall. Ha! Yes, sir. I love Leonard Marshall. And the hit heard around the world. Mm-hmm. As we all know, uh, that is... Ended Montana. It, that was it. <laughs> it kind of ended. We have talked about it on this show last year. That was the, the beginning of the end of Joe Montana, was when Leonard Marshall took his soul. And Leonard Marshall was a second-round pick. He was picked 37 overall. I played with the Giants from 83 to 92. Two-time Super Bowl champion in 83 and a half career sacks. Um... And whoa, whoa, whoa! How Nick, many career sacks, Nicky boy? Seventy-one and a half. No, I wrote something wrong. Wow, that's a lot of sacks. Yeah, he was really good. Why do I have seventy-one and a half and eighty-three and a half, and I have sacks, tackles, sandwiched in between? I'm going to assume hit. You know what? Don't worry about the numbers. Leonard Marshall was a freak of nature, and he. Uh, I love defensive line football. I love power rushing, and that's exactly what he was um, from everything I've seen. But, again, I didn't see him live in person, so I can't tell you how it was. But I really wish I did. Leonard Marshall, number five. It's 79 and a half sacks as a giant. Where the fuck did I get 83 and a half? He had 83 and a half in his career. Okay, so where I, why do I have 71 and a half for tackles? That's not how many tackles he had. He had 714 tackles. Because <laughs> you just don't know how to read your writing. <laughs> no, I put a, I put a dot... <laughs> Seventy one dot four. So I had I had the numbers right. Yeah. I just didn't have huh, what a fucking idiot. He had two insane years. He had an A V of thirteen and sixteen in nineteen eighty five and nineteen eighty five. Yeah, 1986. man, he was he was a beast. Though he was a ferocious pass rusher and uh ninety nine tackles in nineteen eighty five and fifteen and a half sacks. That's crazy. It's not how did he who won defense player of the year that year? I'd love to know he, that. He received AP2. What does AP2 mean? Oh, it means that he was a second-team All-Pro yeah. in, in 1985. Yeah. Well, one def- if, you can, if you don't mind looking that um, up real AP quick. Defensive Rookie of the Year, AP Defensive Player of the Year was Mike Singletary. Okay. So, you know, well, 85, <laughs> 85 Bears. Yeah. So, Makes sense. one of those guys. And then Marcus Allen won MVP. Fuck Marcus Allen. Whoa. One of my best and most prized possessions of memorabilia that I have is I have a Raiders helmet. And a big helmet. One half of the helmet is signed by Mark Allen on the front. The other side is, is signed by Bo Jackson. Really? And I made sure that I... I'd sell it. I made sure that I that I matched... You love the Raiders. I do love the Raiders. You, I made sure that I matched up. I looked, because the Raiders changed like, their helmet a couple times, and there's slight different variations. So I made sure that when those two played together... That was the logo? I made sure that I had the right helmet when they both played together. Um, that's one of my most... Like, Bo Jackson, not... I'm an awesome NFL player, but yeah. those those two on the same team at the same time. It's iconic. It's, it's awesome. It's iconic. Yeah. And he's just one of the greatest athletes of all time. Very cool. And uh, next week on Raiders History Today. Um, Raiders Raiders History Today? It was a joke because we just spent a minute talking about the Raiders. And it's, this is a Johnny. That's, a, that's a bad name for a show, though, Raiders History well, Today. What the fuck, Justin? I'm kidding. All Sorry. Right. I, I, thought, two, I thought it was a little funny. I have two left. Two left. Okay, let's see if they're on here. Harry Carson. Harry Carson, absolutely. Just... Almost a respect thing. I don't think he did anything like otherworldly special. He was a Hall of Famer. He was a Hall of Famer, correct. But I just, you don't like see flashy highlighted plays of Harry Carson. You know no, what I mean? Don't. That's you actually know. really a good point. Yeah. It's so, it, <laughs> it, it's like, what was I missing? And that's kind of, not what was I missing. I wanted to, I want to see the Hall of Fame player, Harry Carson. Yeah. Um, because. Just seeing all of them together. 
Correct. Including with Brad Van Pelt and Big Blue Wrecking Crew before, yep. Um, yep. you know, before Van Pelt retired. Correct. So. And Harry Carson was a fourth-round pick, hundred. he was pick 105. He spent his 12-year career with the New York Giants starting in 76 and finishing in 88. So he, he did miss out on Super Bowl 25, but uh, we don't hold that against him. He had 19 sacks, he had 11 interceptions, and his long overdue induction into Canton was in 2006. Because it's insane. It is insane, right? Because I remember 2006, I, I was still relatively young, and I remember my dad always being pissed that Harry Carson wasn't in the Hall of Fame. Like, what's taking so long? Blah, 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 blah. And uh, I I don't know, like, how the ballots work in the NFL, but that might have been his last time on the ballot in 2006. Damn. So he that finally got right. it well-deserved. And, um, yeah, like I said, I really would just kind of want to – we don't see highlighted plays like we do in LT or – a Leonard Marshall's hit or a Gary Reason hit, you know, all these different things. We don't see that with Harry Carson. So with my own two eyes, I wish I could have seen him. Last but not least, my friend, Carl Banks. Yep. Carl Banks, number seven. I, uh, this was where I debated OJ with, but Carl Banks was, he was a giant. You know, he is two time Super Bowl champion. Uh, and he was third overall pick in, in um, wh- what year was he drafted? 1984, I want to say. It's the last time we took a linebacker in the first round. And I this have. is like franchise history ever. I had that written down. So, great point, Justin. Um, and a lot of people say that he should be a Hall of Famer. He was an old decade player. Yes, he was. And a lot of people say he's a, a Hall of Fame snub. And that's another reason why I wish I could have seen him. Like, okay, let me see if he was a Hall of Famer. Like, do, do, does my eye test tell me that he's a Hall of Famer? Or not. And he's obviously a Giants legend. Um, great broadcaster nowadays, too. So, I would have loved to see Carl Banks. That would have been a hobby of mine. Super Bowl 21. See what I did there? Oh, you know what? I am sharp today. Super Bowl 21, he had an insane game. We, re- we re-watched that last year. We did. And that was, like, the main theme and the main thread. is that Carl Banks is just a man-man running around the football field. I didn't really know that. Now, before we started this podcast, I would... You know, I put the power rankings, and I think this is still fair. Like, Harry Carson, LT, and then it's a tier, and then it's Carl Banks. Yes. Um, But, you know, with this, you know, since we started this podcast, and since, you know, we've, kinda, we've done more, we've watched you, more, uh-huh. it, it, he's, he's, he's up right there, there with them. He's, he's up right there, there with them. Yep. He really is. Um, He just he just played like a madman. Where it, it was a disregard for the body and the well-being of, like, your body. Yeah, literally. Which that's kind of how you have to play. Exactly, and it's funny uh, – when he is talked in our Twitter spaces, yeah, he kind of talks about like kind of just that way of that style of playing, like yeah, lay it all out there. It's, he's like, there's a lot of tiptoeing, a lot of a lot of pussy footing around, mm-hmm. not not going a hundred miles an hour at the ball, tackling all these things, and he's like, that's it, you know, that's today's game and age. But he was a, uh, it's almost like the Russell Westbrook of football, where you go a hundred thousand miles an hour wow. every single play. Okay, and he was all over the field. Um, from what we've watched, and I would have loved to have seen it on a weekly basis. So, Carl Banks, number seven. Who does Russell Westbrook play with? Who is his teammate? Anyway. Anywho. Let's give a recap of the list. Let's do it. Number one, Lawrence Taylor. Number two, Mark Bavaro. Number three, Frank Gifford. Number four, Harry Carson. Number five, Leonard Marshall. Number six, Y.A. Titty. Uh, Tittle. Uh, number seven, Carl Banks. Number eight, Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker. Number nine, so far inactive. Number 10, Emlyn Tennell. Do you have any other thoughts? Do I have any other thoughts? Do you have any other thoughts to give before we wrap up? Well, you're missing number nine. I'm missing number nine? Yeah. We'll go quick. I'll give now, you a hint. Now I need the hint. Now you need the hint. Uh, defense? Jim Burt. No. Um, Secondary? No. D-line. Leonard Marshall. Jim Burt, not it. It's 80s. It has to be like 90s that I'm like no, forgetting. No, no, no. It's, he was drafted in 1975. Man. Oh, this is going to hurt. This is really going to hurt. I can't get it. George Martin. Oh, God, fuck. I, I'm surprised you didn't get George Martin. No. I was like, I knew he was only with like maybe. did He, he won one Super Bowl. He won one Super Bowl, yes. I, he was not yeah. there for Super Bowl 25. He was there when we destroyed the Denver Broncos. Anyway, um, yeah, George Martin, uh, he was, <laughs> I, I know we talked about this when we talked about Jesse Armstead, but he was round 11, and they yeah. had 11 rounds, and he was pick 260. Did George Martin have that, uh, did he have like a pick six or 
A fumble return for a touchdown, big man with ball moment. Yes, he did. Okay. And yeah. that's, again, one of those plays where you didn't see what Harry Carson, a highlighted play, George Martin. A couple big sticks he's had, too. Uh, he had 46 sacks, three interceptions, and went. Remember when I said a touchdown number surprised me from somebody on my list? And that's George Martin. It's seven. Seven? <laughs> yeah, as a D lineman. <laughs> That's a lot of touchdowns. It's like almost as many as I'm to know. <laughs> literally. Literally. And uh, so I, I, I would have loved to see George Martin again. I love defense, hard-hitting football like that. We have, to, we have to check on the post-production end of this. George Martin, does he have the most touchdowns as a defensive lineman of all time? I'm going to... Oh, wow. I mean, seven's a lot. Yes. Well, that's something that we have to see if we can like look Michael up. Michael Strahan maybe has one. Yeah. Two, maybe. JPP has like one or two. Yeah. And it's like, wow, that's like you you made your plays. OC, I feel like has, you know, he has like one or two. One was against the 49ers, 05. Yeah. So Yeah, it was like strip seven. Seven. Yeah. seven. And George Martin's not like it's not like LT running down the field as an athlete. No. He's a big man. He's a huge man. So George Martin. Um, I don't need to run down the list again. I just did that. Just add in number nine, George Martin. Beautiful. And uh yeah, I think are there any omissions? Van Pelt, Sam Hoff. Uh, Hoff, Huff. Yeah. That's yeah, Huff that's that's the big one. one. That's the big that's one. Big I know, one. and I knew I was going to get some flack for that. But guess what? I don't give a fuck. My list. That's what these blue eyes wanted to see. All right, that is a bleeding blue episode. Thank you so much for watching. Different little yeah, mixed up fun. version of snacks pantry. I like those because they're quick hitting. Yes, they're yep. quick hitting. One guy goes to the next. One guy goes to the next. One. We're not spending too much time on a given topic. Yeah. And I feel and, like and, and overall, overall, it's not going to really make you think that hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's only a certain. I'd say maybe 15 guys that, yeah. that I would pick from. So. Lovely. Got All it. right. Keep on bleeding blue. We will see you next weekend. Snacks. Fuck Tiki Barber. Peace.